All right, so we're here in section P2 talking about exponents. And the last idea you need to be aware of in order to complete the homework for this section is the idea of like terms. Now, like terms are nice because they can be added or subtracted. You might think about it as having x plus 3x, we say that x and 3x are like terms, and we are able to then combine them to get 4x. If I have 1x and I add 3 more x's, I have 4x's in total. Well, you can extend this idea and talk about x times y plus, you know, something like 5 times y times x. Here we have the same variable, but here we've got products of variables. But since they both contain 1x and they both contain 1y, I can just write it as xy plus 5xy. And this is just like saying x plus 5x, because now they're the, exactly the same, and we end up with 6xy. Well, it turns out that radicals behave like variables do. So, you can't just add 2 plus 2, exactly that is. You can get an approximation But this is as simple as it gets without using a calculator. It's just like saying that you can't really combine x plus 2 because while x is a number, you just don't know what that number is, so you don't know what the result's going to be when you add 2 to this unknown number. It's the similar thing here. Square root of 2 and x are playing very similar roles. But it works as well for something like square root of 2 plus square root of 3. This is like saying x plus y. One unknown, one unknown number plus another unknown number is, I don't know, third unknown number. So these two are not considered to be like terms. Because we really can't combine them any further. Can't simplify, so not like terms back here as well. But it's also true, even if I have the same number inside, but I have different numbers outside the radical here, what we call on the index of the radical. This is kind of like saying, because if you think about this, this is 2 to the 1 third, because we can put 1 as the exponent of anything if it doesn't have an exponent on it. And remember we converted this to be a fraction where the number inside the radical was on top and outside the radical got put on bottom. So we have two to two different exponents here. That's kind of like saying x cubed plus x to the fourth. I can't really combine it here because while they both have three x's in them, this one has a fourth x that isn't matched by anything over here. So the variables aren't identical. You know, I have x times x times x plus four x's multiplied together. Since these two things aren't identical, I can't combine them as two times x to some power. So all these are not like terms. But 
if I have the same number outside as I do inside, then these are like terms, and I can combine them. This is just the same thing as x plus x, which gives me 2x. So up here, I'm going to have two of these weird things. I had two unknown, I had one unknown and another of that same unknown. I'm left with two of that unknown. One weird thing plus the same weird thing, I've got two of that weird thing. So in order for a radical to be a like term, they have to have the same number inside as they do outside. Now, consider example 3, 3a, from P2 on page 14. Initially, it looks like these two numbers aren't like terms, and we're done. There's nothing left to do. But notice, there's a perfect square that goes into 45. 45 is 5 times 9, and 9 is a perfect square. So the square root of 45 is just the square root of 5 times the square root of 9 because square roots are just just an exponent and exponents play nice with multiplication they kind of distribute well the same thing's true with 20 the square root of 20 20 is just 4 times 5 so the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 and we're doing this because 9 has a nice square root. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have 3 times square root of 5, or 3 square roots of 5. Square root of 4 is nice, that's just 2. So instead of 45, square root of 45, we're going to write 3 times the square root of 5. And instead of square root 20, we're going to write 2 times the square root of 5. So we have 3 times the square root of 5 plus what was 7 times 2 square roots of 5. Let's simplify this. 3 square roots of 5. I can do 7 times 2 that leaves me with 14. I can't multiply these numbers together because they have different exponents on them. You know, it's kind of like saying x times y squared. I can't really do anything with them because the number, you know, the 3 is not 5, 14 is not 5, this has an exponent of 1, and square root of something is just that to the one-half power. So the powers are different, the bases are different, there's no way I can combine them. So 3 plus this weird number, or 3 times this weird number, plus 5 times that, 14 times that weird number, 3 plus 14 is 17 times this weird number. So be aware of that. Even though they may not look to be like terms initially, see if you can simplify them. If you can simplify them, you might just see that they come out to actually be like terms and can be expressed very succinctly.